My name is Cody Barnett. Uh, I'm an orthopedic physical therapist. We've also got Dr. Damien Heiser, uh, who's also an orthopedic physical therapist. We both specialize in treating not only elbow problems, but also pickleball specific injuries. And so that's what brings us all together today. And we run into this all the time in the office. So, um, you know, we have a lot of people ask us about this. And so it's like, okay, let's, let's just put on a webinar for people and um, cover this stuff. So, um, so uh, in terms of everybody that's on the call tonight, I want to ask you all, ask you all if, if this ever happens to you. Um, I've tried the exercises. I've tried putting the brace on my elbow. I've tried um, doing stretching. I've tried getting on Google and Googling some exercises. Um, it still kind of still seems to linger around. Um, maybe, maybe type in the chat. If any of this stuff has happened to you, just type it in the chat, just type yes, or, or type your uh, specific instance. And that is uh, maybe we take time off. I, you know, I'll take a month off. When I take a month off, and then when I go back to play again, or I go back to doing activities again, it'll be gone. And you go back to playing again, and it's still there. Well, we're going to talk about why that happens. Uh, maybe it's something that's, you know, waking you up at night, you know, interrupting sleep. Uh, maybe it's grabbing the coffee cup in the morning and lifting that up or getting the juice and pouring the juice in your juice glass in the morning, uh, those types of things. Um, and so these are all the common stories that people tell us and the, the common things that we hear. Um, we also hear a lot about people that, you know, go to, they've been, you know, to massage therapy, they might have been to physical therapy, uh, been to the doctor's office, um, um, you know, all sorts of different treatments and things, but yet it still persists and still won't go away. And we're going to talk about that tonight and um, why that happens. And so, yeah, so Karen wrote, um, I rest it and it feels better. And then I go lift weights and it flares back up again. Like that is super common. We hear that all the time. We hear that all the time. So we're going to cover all of that stuff. Um, and um, in terms of pickleball specific stories that we hear with people, um, oftentimes um, it's either, you know, people that either um, have started playing and are really excited and really enjoy it. So they're playing a lot. Um, sometimes it's, it's people that um, are really good and, and regular pickleball players and uh, it's just kind of overuse. So we're going to kind of talk about all of those things. So we're going to first talk about just a little bit about the elbow and um, some pickleball specific things uh, that we're going to cover. Just some quick tips, quick little takeaways that um, help a lot of people that we want to go over. So um, number one that we're going to talk about is over exuberance when starting. So this is the person that hasn't ever played. Um, they go with their friends or their neighbors and they go, hey, you know, this is kind of fun. I kind of like this. And so they start playing a lot. And before they know it, they're playing seven days a week for two hours a day. <laughs> and, um, but yet they, they weren't, they, it wasn't a gradual ramp up. It was like a ramp up and um, just went crazy. So uh, that, that's something that happens a lot that we see a lot. And um, we, we love people's exuberance and we love that they're excited about it. But sometimes, you know, you're literally going from zero to hundred miles an hour in like no time. And, um, and that uh, stress then stresses the elbow. And what we're talking about is the area on the outside of the elbow, which is by far the most common. And then sometimes it's on the inside of the elbow here. And yeah, you can call it pickleball elbow. You can call it tennis elbow. Generally speaking, you know, the traditional tennis elbow is on the outside and the traditional golfer's elbow is on the inside. Um, but that's usually where it hurts. Hurts picking up the coffee cup, hurts, you know, feeding the dog you know, those, those sorts of things, and it starts to bother people throughout the day. So one thing um, that we see a lot with people, probably more so with beginners, um, less with more experience, but, but I've seen it with both, and that is people holding with too tight of a grip. So um, I know if, you, if you're on this call, maybe you already know this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it to your attention anyway. When, in terms of the tightness of your grip, if I were to grab this, let's say you were holding on to this, and I was to grab it and try to pull it out of your hand, um, I should be able to pull this out of your hand with some resistance. In other words, you shouldn't be hanging on so tight that I can't pull it out. You should be able to just pull it out with a little bit of resistance. And so if you can't you know, test that on yourself or have a friend try to pull it, 
And if you can't do that, then that means you're probably um, holding the paddle too tightly uh, while you're playing. Um, uh, the next thing is um, sometimes uh, the, the actual handle itself is too small of a diameter. And uh, you may be aware of this as well, but it's called an overgrip, which basically is you can wrap this, like what you're seeing here is the standard that came with my paddle from the factory. But you can get what's called pickleball overgrips, which uh, just looks like this, but you, you rewrap it. And that extra bit of material then makes the grip be a, a little bit larger, um, which means if it's a little bit larger, then we're not having to squeeze as much to hang on. So um, take a look at that. If you feel like, you know, if you have maybe bigger hands, um, you might just, we just, may just need some overgrip on your paddle. If you don't know how to do that, you can order the stuff online. Um, you can go on YouTube and there's dozens of videos on how to overwrap your pickleball paddle. And then if you go to any of the local places here in town, um, they can do it for you if you don't want to do it yourself. But overgrip is something to consider and to have on your radar. Um, the other one, um, type in the chat if anybody uses this. Does anybody use any lead tape anywhere um, on their paddle? Just type in there if you do. Well, yeah, let me scroll down. I can't see your messages. Okay, so not anymore. I have, have but not lately with a new paddle. But just something food for thought if, if, you're, uh, if you're not familiar with the lead taping is there's strips of lead tape that you can put on your paddle. Some people will either put it over the top, some people put it on the sides, and some people put it down here on the throat. But if you're somebody that's got um, some heavier weight out on the end of the paddle right here, that extra weight and the extra force makes for a longer, heavier lever arm and can put a little bit more load on. So if you're taping out there, be aware that that sometimes can, can be a contributing factor. Um, next is the weight of the paddle can make a difference. So uh, there's pretty wide ranging variations in weight of paddles. And so I don't know that there's a, a hardcore rule um, on the weight and how big of a person you should be. But I would I would say to you, um, experimenting a little bit. And uh, there's we'll talk in a little bit about how to experiment more um, without having to shell out thousands of dollars in paddles. But um, uh, sometimes just the actual weight of your paddle may not be just quite right for you. Um, the, uh, the next thing is the shock attenuation qualities of the paddle. So that's kind of a, a, a big thing. And the, the paddles are all made of different material. Now, this particular paddle um, is made by Pro Kinex. I don't know if you can see that on there. Um, but Pro Kinex Kinetic. And this is one that uh, they claim uh, attenuate shock a lot better than a lot of other paddles. And there's other manufacturers that have specific models of paddles that they uh, say the same thing. So this uh, Kinetic is one. Uh, there's a company called um, Players, uh, Players Pickleball uh, that they make one that they have some type of gel inside of it that they claim attenuates the shock and also attenuates some of the sound as well. Uh, but, um, uh, and there's others as well. The main thing I'd recommend to you is just get on the internet and start searching for paddles that attenuate shock, that decrease the shock when playing paddle ball, uh, pickleball. But um, it's something that to, to take a look at and try. So if you have not um, experimented with some similar to this, there's options for you. So um, some of the local, Pickleball places have paddles that you can demo. Uh, so that's really easy to do. Uh, there's also companies that you can um, pay a fee and, and they'll ship out like half a dozen paddles to you. And then um, with the agreement that you then you know, ship back the ones that you're not going to purchase, that sort of thing. Uh, some of the websites have 30 day trials where you can trial uh, the paddle for a certain length of time. So sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error, but figuring out and finding one that works for you um, is you know, more than likely gonna be different than your friend. 
um, just like we all wear different shoes, we all wear different size shoes and things like that. Um, you know, we, we're going to probably need a different uh, paddle. So that would be a, a really big one to take a look at is how well is that absorbing shock. Um, and then the, the last thing we'll talk about is am I using correct form? So uh, uh, how do you know that you're, you're using good form when you're hitting a backhand, uh, that sort of a thing? And so if you have never, type, type in the chat, if anybody that has um, worked with any of our local pros around here and gotten some help or is working with a pro currently, that's something I'm gonna suggest for the pro to work with you on, but to look at your mechanics and what are my mechanics. A really good example of this is I had a patient uh, a while back who had just a raging, horrible, horrible pickleball elbow. And I met her down at the courts one day. We, we hit the ball around some. And she was, when she was hitting her backhand, instead of hitting her backhand this way, she was actually turning the paddle over and smacking the ball this way and just torquing the heck out of her elbow right here um, instead of just hitting a nice backhand. So uh, you never know when you're doing something silly like that. And, um, you know, sometimes you don't realize you're doing it, but if you work with a pro, then they'll help you with that. And that's something I definitely encourage. When I, quick story on myself, when I first started playing, um, the very, very first thing I did was took lessons from one of the pros simply because I wanted to make sure I was using good mechanics and not get injured and that sort of thing. And it, it allowed me to help get uh, better a lot faster uh, than had I just winged it on my own. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to just press pause there for a second. And uh, while we're covering the pickleball stuff, any questions thus far, any comments thus far on anything we've covered? Feel free to either type them in the chat or feel free to unmute yourselves. Devin, Devin had a really good comment where he talked about um, he's tried a lot of paddles. Uh, he's been sold on one, but it's kind of now just figuring out what's going on and why this pain is still persisting. So uh, yeah. I think as we head into our next section here, Devin, this is where your ears might kind of perk up just a little bit what we're about to talk about next. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. And then um, uh, one, oh, one last thing I forgot to mention on the uh, on my paddles, and that is both with the paddle and working with your pro, is am I hitting consistently in the sweet spot? And of course, you know, everybody's trying to sell pickleball paddles and they all have their own marketing. Um, but if you can try to find one that does have a larger sweet spot um, so that it decreases the amount of miss hits that you get, because if you happen to hit more, say, on the side of the paddle, um, then because it's not hitting square, that causes a little bit more force that goes on up your arm. Um, and so uh, being able to get one that's got a little bit bigger sweet spot and or working with the pro to go, oh, you're, you know, you're consistently hitting that off of the top of the paddle or hitting it off the bottom of the paddle or that sort of thing. Uh, so that's, that would be something else to, to maybe be aware of and think about. So, um, all right. So next, um, if nobody has any questions there, um, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Damien, and he's going to talk a little bit, bit more about how to differentiate what type of, of pickleball elbow you might have and the differences, and, um, and I'll let you take it away. Perfect. Thank you, Cody. So uh, kind of like Cody was just saying there, so when we think about pickleball elbow, I want everyone to imagine that that pickleball elbow is more of an umbrella term. Um, and there's some more specifics that we can go into as to why we're having pickleball elbow and what is the cause of the pickleball elbow. Um, I think everyone tends to assume it's the same thing, uh, when in reality, there are a lot of different things that it can be. And that's where it's important to diagnose and determine specifically what's going on because the treatments are going to be totally different depending on what's going on. And, you know, Devin, you've kind of mentioned this in the chat, not to call you out here, my friend, but, you know, and, and for anyone else who's watching later on, who's maybe saying, well, I've tried the normal stuff that I'm supposed to do and I'm still dealing with the pain. Well, part of the problem might also be that we're just not on the right diagnosis. So that's what we're going to kind of focus on a little bit here now. So 
I know, like I kind of said, imagine if you will, pickleball elbow. as an overarching umbrella term here, okay? Um, and when we think about the causes of what's going to be causing pickleball elbow, the first one, and this is admittedly for most people by and large, the most common one is going to be what we refer to as a tendinopathy. And I'm writing all this out so that we can all kind of see it um, and take it home with us here. So again, first one, most common one is what we refer to as a tendinopathy. So a lot of people might kind of be scratching their head. What is that word? What does that mean? We've all probably heard of tendinitis before, and that's one we'll kind of get to in a second. Um, but tendinitis tends to be just a little bit more overdiagnosed than what it actually is. And tendinopathy is a more descriptive word, especially for us, as to what is actually happening here. So I do have a visual aid um, that we're going to kind of look at here now. And I've got with me here a piece of steel wire cable. And I want us all to imagine that this cable right here is like the tendon that's located in your forearm right here on this side and also located on this side here, where we tend to get most of our pain with this. Now, in a normal, healthy, not irritated or angry elbow tendon, we tend to see the collagen, which makes up the tendon. It's, it's the name that we give to what the tendon fibers are. It tends to look kind of like the end of this wire here. And even into the middle parts here, as you can see, it's all put together. It's all going the same direction. Um, and if we were to put some force through this, it's going to withstand that force nice, well, not going to cause a problem. Now, when we have this tendinopathy develop for people, what tends to happen to this nice, aligned, parallel, everything is nice and in its place, collagen fibers, they do the opposite. They get a little bit wiry, if you will. Um, they no longer are all put together. They're kind of going in different directions. It's not well organized. And so now this tendon here is not going to tolerate stress very well. And after a period of time, and after this gets significantly more, that's when we tend to start to have pain and develop this pickleball elbow. Now, treating this versus treating some of these other things is going to be very, very different. And the number one way that we're going to help someone who their tendon, their elbow tendon looks like this, um, is not actually going to be through something like surgery. It's not going to be through something like an injection per se. Um, and even it's not going to be something with a brace or some topical creams or some ibuprofen or anything like that. Those things tend to mask symptoms really, really well, but it doesn't solve the issue, which is we have to fix this right here. And the only way for us to fix this is by going through what we would call a graded gradual exercise program. We want to load this tendon because that's the only way we're going to get it to start to look like this again. But most importantly, it's how we're going to get that tendon to tolerate the loads and demands that pickleball puts on it, as well as other life stresses we go through. And so what that tends to look like for us is almost like a stair step. We start at one level, we do some exercises there, make sure pain doesn't get worse. When we do well there, we start to step it up to the next level and then we step it up to the next level and so on. A lot of times people spend a lot of time down here because they don't know how to step up to that next level. Um, they're going through periods of taking time off, going back and playing and having pain. This tendinopathy problem is one that can kind of turn into a vicious cycle and repeat itself. So again, this is the probably most common reason why we're getting this pickleball elbow. Number two, second most common reason why, is going to be what I had kind of alluded to earlier. And that's going to be the tendinitis. So when we think of a tendinitis, you know, what this really tends to be 
in the long run is the very, very beginning stages of a tendinopathy. Um, it's kind of like, if you will, the kindling that's about to start the fire. Um, and a lot of times people will pick up that they're having this problem and they're able to actually manage it on their own really, really well. This is where maybe they uh, take a step back if they've come and started playing really recently. You know, in this stage of the game, some medications can be helpful, um, but really this is really important for us to figure out what's going on because this is going to lead us to start to immediately change some of the things you're doing. So kind of like Cody had mentioned just a little bit ago about some of the technique things, something that you're doing with your paddle, the way you're hitting the ball, the grip. If we can get those things addressed right away, we can prevent this problem from turning into this problem here and save us all a whole lot of pain, headache, and not being able to be on the court playing pickleball. So this is probably the second most common reason why people come to us and why they tend to get this pain in their elbow with pickleball elbow. The third most common reason um, and I think this is going to be a reason that some people might fall into, especially if they've been trying for a long time to get this issue resolved, is going to be a nerve problem. And there's one that we tend to see very specifically um, with these types of pickleball elbow. If it's on the outside, more here, that nerve we call the radial nerve. And if it's more on the inside of the elbow here, we call that one the ulnar nerve. But by and large, the naming is not what is important. What's important for us is knowing, hey, we have a nerve problem at this point and we don't have a tendon problem going on. And if you could imagine, we're not going to exercise or strength train a nerve to get better. That's how we get tendons better, but that looks totally different from a nerve problem. Um, tell you a quick story. So I had a patient come in, um, you know, played pickleball, was having pain right here for a long time playing pickleball. It bled into his office job, bled into his daily life. He also wasn't able to go and do some lifting things that he enjoyed anymore. Um, and he came in and told me on day one, hey, I think I have pickleball elbow right here. Um, what he also had going on was a little bit of some shoulder pain though, and he was also having a little bit of some pain, some tingling in his fingers there. So, you know, if we had just stopped right there from what he thought it was and we treated it that way without doing the assessment that we do to determine what's going on, we would be doing the exact wrong thing for this guy. We'd be treating it like a tendon. We'd be doing an exercise program, which although it could be helpful, isn't going to necessarily solve his nerve problem. And he'd still be having the same problems playing pickleball today. And that's why it's really, really important for us to look at these things, determine what exactly is going on. Because if we've been trying to treat an elbow problem, a pickleball elbow problem like this, and it's not gotten any better, well, hey, there's a good chance that there's something else going on like this, or even something more underlying that. Um, and in summary there, these are going to be the big reasons why people are coming in to see us. And the most important thing is getting that determination, figuring out what's going on, because the way we're going to address it, the way we're going to treat it, and the way that we're going to keep you playing pickleball might be totally different. And it could be a reason why you're maybe spinning in circles, scratching your head at this point. Um, so with that, Cody, I'm going to turn it back over to you here, sir. So, um, yeah, if you guys don't mind, either either feel free to unmute or uh, type it in the chat, but just ballpark, like how how long, everybody that's on the call, how long is, has this been bothering you? Months. Months, okay. And then Brian, if you don't mind, just share a little bit, like what have you tried so far? Uh, I've tried. I mean, you you talk about the number. I bought one of those little. Uh, I've done weights with the eccentric weights. I've done little things where you twist. Uh, now I've started with the little finger thing. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, so I've done those. I've done again kind of light weights and and bringing it up and then letting it down slowly. Uh, uh, and now I've done and and the, the I said the finger thing seems to have. Don't, I don't know, again, maybe everybody's pickleball is a little bit different. The reasons their elbows are a little different and whether it's muscle balance or whatever, but um, the finger thing seems to have, have helped better than anything else so far. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether that's just placebo or whether that's really actual reality. 
Yeah, gotcha. Okay, very helpful. And then, so we've got um, October last year, and we've got six weeks. Uh, people typed in. And so um, uh, just a, a quick sidebar, just to add on to what Dr. Damien was just saying, but on that example he gave of the tendon tissue that was all kind of um, disorganized, uh, that our body has the ability to change that. Our body can fix that. Um, the interesting thing is, is that only, it only fixes it with the correct amount of load, the, cor the correct exercise at the right time and the right dosing. And it's one of those things that, I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase, exercise is medicine. This really is truly exercise is medicine because uh, there is no drug, there's no surgery, there's nothing that, that will fix that other than um, the right type of exercise. So to your point, Brian, in terms of the, the things that you've been doing, it's all really good. Um, all good stuff it kind of makes me wonder a little, little bit, is one of those other two problems maybe uh, contributing to this for you, but, um, but also realize it does take time for our body to correct that. So it can take as long as six to eight to 12 weeks, depending on the severity, um, for our body to change that collagen tissue and, and make it more healthy tissue. So uh, my, my point is, don't give up because <laughs> it does take a little bit of time. So keep, keep working on what you've been working on. Um, all right, so um, uh, before, we, before we continue on, so what, with what we've covered so far, A, um, has this been helpful? And then um, B, what questions um, about what we've covered, what questions about what we've covered do you have for us? And again, feel free to either unmute or pop yeah. on the chat. Devin kind of pointed out in the comments that, you know, he had played for a couple of years before his pain had started. Um, no, no worries, uh, Devin, about the audio. Um, and he's he's kind of wondering, you know, is this potentially a nerve problem because it's been going on for so long at this point? And going down more of the exercise, tendon loading route doesn't seem to clear things up. So uh, you know, you're, you're very well right, Devin, it might be that there's a nerve problem going on and that's why this thing has hung around for so long on you. Um, but there's also the possibility, yeah, I tried everything. There we go. Um, you know, and that's where, again, sometimes being very, very specific and taking those steps that we need to, um, is really, really important if it's a tendon problem, but, you know, I'd be curious too, Devin, uh, as to taking a look at things and seeing, hey, uh, has the mark just maybe been missed? Is this more of a nerve issue versus anything else potentially? Yeah. And, and sometimes it can be a nerve problem down the elbow, and sometimes it can actually be a nerve problem up in our neck or through our shoulder blade area. So um, all things to definitely check out and check out and look at. Um, all right. So uh, if you have, if you think of a question, Feel free to just type it in, like very informal here. So, you know, feel free to hop in at any point. Um, so if uh, for anybody that's on this that you guys are interested in kind of fleshing this out a little bit more, um, you know, if you have questions that we didn't get answered or you're wondering of those three things that Dr. Damien uh, covered, you know, you know, which one of those things do I have? Uh, the short answer is, is like everybody's a little bit different. And um, as we've just discussed, and as you just learned, like a pickleball elbow is not a pickleball elbow is not a pickleball elbow. There's there's a variation and there's a uniqueness uh, to all of these. And if we're not treating the right thing, then we're not going to get the results that we want to get. So, um, uh, so anyway, it, it definitely is something that, that we individualize based on what we see. So if if you're on the on the call and you would like to um, learn more and and dive into this a little bit deeper than what we can do on a, a webinar, then uh, what we're doing is for everybody that's on the call tonight is we're going to have uh, what we call our pain-free pickleball jumpstart call. Um, and if you would like to do that, there's absolutely no obligation. There's no cost. We just want to be able to, to help people solve this so that they can get back to playing and uh, be able to stay active, stay mobile, do the things they enjoy, hang out with their friends and, uh, and all of that stuff. So if you have interest at um, taking one of these jumpstart calls, we actually have, have 
booked out, ironically, exactly four slots this week for these calls, and there's four people on the call. Um, so everybody else is, is going to get the replay. Uh, they're going to have to wait. <laughs> but um, but anyhow, if you would, if you're interested in just hopping on a call where we could do some one-on-one -on -one and talk through the, some, where we can ask you a little bit more detailed questions than what, we're, than what we can do in this group format. And just hop on a call with us. We'd be happy to do that. We uh, call you and schedule that tomorrow, or email you and schedule that tomorrow. Um, but if that's something that you'd be interested in, uh, that's what we're offering here: is just a chance to talk one-on-one -on -one, um, and figure out exactly, you know, what your root cause might be, uh, and and then also give you clarity as far as what what my next step should be. Um, do I do I need to be doing some treatment or do I just need to be sticking with what I'm doing and giving it time or do I need to, to see a, a different provider or whatever? Um, you know, we can we can dive through a lot of that stuff on a phone call. But what we want to do is be able to give everybody clarity and we want to be able to give everybody confidence because, quite frankly, we don't know what we don't know. And so that's what we're here for is to help answer those questions and uh, give you some clarity and confidence as far as, okay, what the heck do I do next? And so that's the purpose of our pain-free pickleball jumpstart call. So if you have interest in that, all you gotta do is just simply um, type in the chat, uh, just type uh, yes, just type yes in the chat. And Damien, I hope you can still see that, <laughs> see the chat because somehow I've made mine disappear. Yep, we're um, good. Um, but uh, anyway, we would be uh, happy to do that with, with, with everybody here. And, um, and of course, we've got your emails from the uh, sign up through Eventbrite. So we'll just, just you know, keep your eyes peeled on your email uh, first thing tomorrow morning, and we'll um, email you and set up a time and uh, get, that, get that set up for you. And um, from a time perspective, um, I plan on maybe uh, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, for a call. Um, and what we're going to do on our end is just ask you a bunch of questions, kind of cover some of the stuff that we um, covered tonight and get a little bit more detail. And then for you, um, we want you to have some clarity and confidence as far as next steps and what do I do from here? So, um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and get you guys contacted and uh, we'll be able, like I say, we got four slots this week and we have four people on the call. So we'll be able to make that happen. Yep, we got a couple claims, so. Very good. All right, okay, so um, we're about four minutes over. We're okay on time if you guys are, though. But um, before we start to wrap up, uh, what uh, what questions do you have? Uh, what kind of popped up in your mind um, while we're talking? Um, we'd be happy to chat more. Okay. All right. Well. Okay. Yeah. So Devin's looking forward to the call and he's in a Monday league that starts at seventh. Are you I'm assuming right. it's starting tonight, Devin, in about 45 minutes. So yeah, right. we, we better get your call scheduled ASAP and get this thing figured out, man. Yeah. And, uh, and Brian's getting ready to go play too. Yeah, so, there we go. We got, we yeah. got a couple of people we got to get figured out here. So perfect. All right, so we'll uh, we'll contact you, and then um, good luck, everybody who's going to go play this evening, and then uh, look for our email uh, tomorrow, and we'll look forward to to chatting again, and uh, we appreciate everybody's time, appreciate you being on here, um, like we we love, you know, we love learning and, and we love teaching, uh, that's that's where our heart is, so uh, we appreciate everybody that made the time to be here tonight, and. Um, uh, if this was helpful, love love it if you would share share the information with other people. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you, everyone. Okay. All right. Have a good night, everybody. And um, we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Good night.